So uh, today I, I would like to talk about uh, powering the innovation through use of open data uh, and AI. But before we dive deep into the topic of uh, open data and uh, AI, let's take a look what are the main challenges LiDAR data processing managers and experts are facing uh, day to day. So first thing is that uh, you have the technical specification or requirements of your end client and you have to ask yourself, will you be able to deliver end results uh, in time, on budget, and with high enough accuracy? And this uh, can produce quite a lot of stress if there are some uncertainties how you will go about the delivery. So in precision, costs and delays are quite a big challenge. Second thing is that with larger data sets, with more data, uh, the compute and storage uh, capacity actually is becoming a problem. You have to have enough storage uh, for peak demands, also enough compute power, and then also the software is changing every day. You have to update uh, the software. Then also there is the AI, uh, and the AI can be seen also as a push and pull driver for the innovation here as, in one sense, everybody is talking about AI, and uh, it makes sense to be reasonable about it, how one might go to uh, adapt it. Then the last thing, more on the open data sets, is finding the data sets. So a lot of European countries already have open LiDAR data sets, but the problem is that they are scattered along different uh, platforms, uh, and it's hard to find them. Uh, then you have to find how to download, so for some countries you even have to send the hard drive to some office to get the data. Uh, then also is the question of the uh, licensing, if you can use the data. So why are all these challenges happening? So first thing is that uh, there are higher and higher expectations uh, from the end uh, clients. Uh, greater classification accuracies are required. Uh, more categories are requested by uh, end uh, customers. Deadlines are getting shorter and industry as a whole is progressing and pushing the threshold for uh, deliverables. Then, already mentioned, data volume is increasing. As we see, each year uh, sensor manufacturers are uh, pushing out new sensors which uh, operate at higher frequencies. Point densities of uh, data is getting higher and higher, and we need to stall all those, store all those data. And also, the uh, scannings are becoming more frequent. So a lot of countries are already doing like a cyclic yearly coverage of, uh, of entire countries. Then, as already said, open LiDAR data sets are fragmented. Each country has its own portal, no option to download the data. And uh, there are also different licensing models. And last but not least, there is an innovation uh, part. So we have to keep innovating, adopting new, pool, new tools, see how AI can help us, and uh, also with this, how we can address new requirements. So now we just take a look how things were just a few years ago and how are they now. So a few years back, you can easily do entire projects on workstation or your, let's say, more hefty PC. Today, for large projects, you need to have compute clusters, either on your own infrastructure or you can run them out in cloud. Then, in terms of storage, back then, most of the projects can fit on, let's say, a few terabytes of hard drive. Now, with uh, higher densities, you need to have large, large storage capacities and you can store up to petabytes of data. Then. In terms of classification, a few years ago, only the ground classification was usually requested. Maybe buildings also. Today, clients are requesting all sorts of categories from solar panels, uh, wind turbines, uh, pipelines, and it's getting harder and harder 
to actually uh, automatically classify or in reasonable time frame I cost classify the data sets. Uh, also the classification accuracy, the threshold which is what is acceptable is increasing and uh, this uh, is uh, reducing additional let's say stress and costs on the delivery of the uh, classification data. And last but not least are the deadlines. So the deadlines for the projects back a few years ago were more reasonable compared to today. But in other sense, it makes sense that uh, data is published as soon as it's captured. Because the most value in the data is the day that is captured and longer it passes, uh, less, let's say, accurate or current it is. Uh, so what is the approach that uh, we are proposing to address those challenges? So we are at Fly developing uh, processing tools with uh, AI and other uh, uh, workflows to enable uh, easy uh, processing of both clouds. Uh, the processing is fast and it's scalable, so if you have large compute clusters, either on-premise or if you would like to use uh, cloud, we can scale as many compute nodes as uh, they are needed to uh, do the processing uh, in time. Uh, with uh, automated tools, we also get consistent results. So if you are doing manual uh, annotations, even then uh, results may not be consistent because uh, multiple people, annotators, are doing the job and they're interpreting data a bit differently. So with uh, those tools, you can get consistent results then the next strength of using um, AI machine learning approach uh, is that uh, classifiers may be adaptable. So you can fine tune the classifiers to your specific project's uh, specification or even add new uh, categories. Then such classification are also ac more accurate compared to any other uh, method. Solutions are versatile and reliable. So with that, I would like to speak no, no more a bit open data. So at uh, hub at um, uh, we published uh, 12 uh, countries uh, with open data. You can easily navigate uh, uh, on the hub. Just click on the data set and we'll open the point cloud viewer. You can also type the name of the city and again the, uh, in the on the right hand side you uh, will get the view uh, of the point cloud. Uh, and we are also constantly adding new data sets to our open uh, LiDAR hub. Then uh, you can obviously also visualize all those 3D point clouds directly in the web browser. You can easily do cross sections or some simple measurements such as height, volumes, areas. And then we also enable you to download the data or uh, even do some more advanced analysis. So you have different uh, classifiers that classify point clouds in areas such as ground, vegetation, buildings, etc. Then we have different raster analysis, vector analysis for contours. And uh, last but not least, also for our forestry, we have uh, flows for generating forest inventory. Obviously, the point density of uh, point cloud has to be high enough to be able to also detect the, uh, the three, uh, three, three trunks. Uh, in terms of classifier, uh, we have four different pre-trained classifiers that uh, you can use, one for Aerial mapping, which does the categories such as uh, ground, buildings, vegetation, power line, wires, towers, uh, uh, vehicles, etc. Then we have uh, next one for mobile mapping, uh, kind of similar, but for yeah, mobile mapping applications where we do road, uh, sidewalks, uh, pedestrians, street lamps, etc. Then the forestry one, uh, which we already saw. 
and our uh, latest addition of pre-trained models is for uh, bathymetric uh, application either uh, inland in rivers or for uh, sea offshore or near shore to classify uh, topo ground, uh, batty ground or seabed, river bed, uh, water surface and all other categories. Uh, so with fly we are trying to enable LiDAR experts and enthusiasts to visualize and see the data at scale to do the analysis in easy fashion and with that also to enable innovation. So I would like to conclude with one uh, use case we did last year. So uh, I think last July uh, in Switzerland uh, there was a severe storm uh, destroying uh, buildings, forests, etc. And uh, after the storm uh, has happened, uh, Canton de Neuchâtel uh, ordered a rapid uh, LiDAR data acquisition, which was done by uh, Helimap. And then uh, Neuchâtel asked us to do a rapid classification uh, for that area. Uh, we used our off-the-shelf classifier to classify the entire area. Uh, the processing time was roughly nine hours on single GPU, so basically overnight uh, we were able to uh, make the delivery to clients so they can then use it uh, in let's say, rapid response uh, for uh, the, uh, all the teams on the ground. And then the second, maybe even more interesting use case in scope of the same uh, project was that they were also interested how many trees were basically uh, destroyed uh, or laid down. Uh, and for that, we didn't yet have a classifier that would be ideal for the use case. So we use our forestry classifier, fine tune it a bit to be able to also detect the uh, lying uh, trees on the floor. Uh, so those are those pinky, reddish uh, ones. So we created a new classifier to classify all those uh, dead trees or lying trees. And then we also did the vectorization of those so uh, that we can export it in a geopack, geojson, or whatever. Uh, vector format for further analysis to estimate how much trees were actually uh, uh, damaged in this calamity. So with that, uh, I'd like to conclude. Uh, I guess everyone is uh, now uh, asking yourself how you can start today. So you can register for our web application. You can try it for free uh, to do the processing. Uh, and if you would subscribe for our, let's say, yearly bundles, you can also use uh, promo code Intergeo to get additional discount. So uh, with that, I would like to conclude. I don't know if we have time for questions, but if not, I will be also at uh, our booth in the hall three. So, so thank you.